And when your goal is part of your identity and you fail at something related to that goal, you can feel like you are a failure, like you're never going to amount to anything. And you can feel like your entire self-worth is compromised because of that failure. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni. And in this video, we are talking about why you procrastinate and how that is linked to the fear of failure. So let's just get started. So it may sound like a bunch of BS, but the fear of failure is actually a real thing. It does have a name as well, and it's called atikophobia. And I wanted to talk about how the fear of failure actually makes you procrastinate. Fear of failure or atikophobia is when you are so afraid of failing that you don't even try. Recently on my Instagram, I posted a caption about the concept of taking a B plus. It's the idea that you give yourself permission to not be perfect and you give yourself permission to not get an A plus on whatever you're doing, on not having to do it perfectly. And by taking that pressure off, you are able to do more new things and to kind of step out of your comfort zone because you're not judging the end result. You're just being proud of doing that new thing in the first place. So it's not about being perfect at it. It's just about did you do it or did you not do it? So the first idea that kind of comes along with this concept is to just start wherever you are. No one's gonna start out as a black belt, right? You work up to it and you get to that point through trial and error and through practicing and through learning. So like the best musicians or the biggest experts in any field, there was a day when they picked up their first book on that subject or they picked up their first guitar or tried singing their first song and everyone starts somewhere, right? It doesn't mean that you can can't grow. So to try something new, it's really important to just take that first step and not judge the result of it. Setting goals is important in itself. And when you set a goal, yes, meeting the goal is important, but it's also about who you become and what you learn along the way. Inevitably, in setting any sort of goal, you're going to change and you're going to grow and you're going to learn. And the important part of setting a goal is experiencing, you know, who you become. And the other thing about setting goals is that if it's not scary then it's not a good enough goal say you're a chef and one of your best specialties is making fettuccine alfredo well making spaghetti and meatballs isn't going to be the biggest jump like yes it's a new thing that you're doing but you might be kind of selling yourself short by setting such easy simple goals and when your goals don't scare you it's not challenging enough it's not going to develop your skills enough and it's not going to challenge you as a person and develop that character that you are looking for and sometimes you know the best things that happen when we set a goal is the things that we didn't realize would happen setting the goal of creating this YouTube channel I was like you know I want to inspire people to care about their mental health I want to give tips on how to be easier on yourself and tips on how to care for yourself better but what I didn't realize along the way was that it also made me understand myself better it made me confront what I didn't know about videography and photography and using my own voice and writing. It made me care more about, you know, skincare and it made me rediscover my love of makeup and fashion because I'm constantly seeing myself on camera and through pictures. And not all of those were just kind of side results, but those have added so much into my life and just made me feel more like myself and made me explore these new areas of myself that I wasn't even setting out to explore. So don't sell yourself short by making making these easy little goals that don't really help you expand yourself and understand the full breadth of who you can be. Something else about fear in itself is that if your goals do scare you, they scare you because you care. You wouldn't experience that sense of fear if the goal wasn't important to you. And when we set goals, especially when they're really big out of our reach goals, we make those entire goals become a part of our identity. And when you make it so important and you make it mean something about who you are, sometimes we go even further than that and we make it our purpose about who we are on this earth. So it's important to remember that no matter what, you are still valued as a person and you still have worth as a person by existing. If you don't meet your goals, that doesn't mean that your worth or that your purpose in the world immediately vanishes. But when your goal is part of your identity and you fail at something related to that goal, you can feel like you are a failure 
failure, like you're never going to amount to anything and you can feel like your entire self-worth is compromised because of that failure. The only thing that can, you know, make you feel like you're not living up to your purpose is just not doing anything at all and just living in this state of fear and this bubble of, you know, your comfort zone. Another reason that you procrastinate is the idea that you can get the benefit of working on something without actually having to do it. So when you were procrastinating on a really cool school project or, you know, on maybe your dreams, um, you still get the benefit of being at a party and telling someone that you are doing all these cool ideas and that you're working on them and you get to talk about it like it's happening but behind the scenes you're actually procrastinating and not really doing anything so you get the benefit of saying that you are taking on x y and z without any of the heartache of actually having to risk whatever it is that you're risking to put that out there. And you also don't have to deal with the reality that you might not be as good as you think or as talented as you think. And again, these are all things that you can work on, but when you don't know, you're kind of living in the shadows. So you get to say that there's all these things that you wanna do and you get to kind of live the positive side of that being part of your identity without the scary side of actually doing it and expressing it and putting it out there in the world for people to judge. So there's a couple of things that you can do to kind of start to change your perspective around failure in itself. So the first thing that you can do to, to shift your perspective on failure is to realize that when you are trying something new and you're challenging yourself and motivating yourself and pushing yourself, there is no real thing as failure. And Will Smith has actually talked about this concept a lot. I'm sure other people have talked about it as well, but it's the concept called failing up. And what failing up is, is the idea that failing will always teach you something about your skills, about maybe your product or how you're marketing yourself or that product. It's going to teach you something about yourself. And when you are putting yourself out there or you are starting a business or whatever your fears might be, the more that you know about your skills and what you need to work on, what talents are your strengths and your weaknesses, that's all gonna help you become stronger. When you go out there and maybe you are giving a, um, a speech or you're doing a public speaking event and you totally bomb it, that is gonna hurt and it's going to affect you to some extent, but what you can do after you you know wallow a little bit is you can say, okay, what did I do wrong? What did I say in my speech? Who was my audience? It gives you an avenue to ask those questions and see how you can be better. So if you do fail, it doesn't mean that your entire goal is in the trash. It just means that you've learned something new to make you even stronger the next time. Finding all those answers are really the key to growing and to being the best that you can possibly be as long as you listen to why you failed and what may have gone wrong. A way that you can actually deal with this fear of failure and start to kind of shift it into something that's more beneficial to you is actually Actually an exercise that um, I learned from Tim Ferriss and it's called fear setting so I actually created my own version of this exercise and tweaked it just a little bit I will link it down in the description below and it's actually part of my course on how to start trusting yourself so I will also link the details of that course in the description as well um, but what this does and what fear setting is it uh, is it allows you to literally write down your biggest fears in relation to a certain goal or a certain project or something that you're working on. Sometimes failure just feels like death. Like we feel like we're gonna fail at something and we're just gonna be swallowed up by a big black hole in the earth. And obviously that's not gonna happen. When you take a step back and you say, okay, my goal is you know, to be an actor. And the worst thing that could happen is that that goal doesn't come true or that I end up acting in a few plays, but I'm never a movie star. Like when you actually write it down, you realize that your life isn't gonna be over if you don't meet this goal, but you're pursuing that goal because you love it and it's your passion and it's what you want to be doing and that it's never gonna be a waste of time because you're enjoying yourself and you are adding something to this world, right? So when you are able to look at what your biggest fears are, you realize that you're not just gonna like die if you fail at something and you're not just going to stop existing if you don't meet a certain goal. You can start to look at the positive and you can start to pursue a goal for the right reasons, right? Because fame and success aren't always going to 
be there for you and they're not always going to motivate you just because you're all of a sudden successful or you've made a certain amount of money that's not going to keep you happy or keep you motivated so doing this exercise will help you put your failures and or your fears of failure in something that you can grasp and something that you can understand but what the best part about this exercise is it also takes it a step further and asks you okay if this happens what will i do then what's my plan b what can i do to turn this around and when you've kind of written out this whole like life plan on a piece of paper you realize that you're not risking as much as you think you're risking because your self-worth again is not going to just disappear if you don't meet a certain goal there's just so much more to being a person than a single goal or an occupation so make sure that you try out this exercise and really allow yourself to put your life into perspective it's going to make such a big difference i promise you and i've exercised a few times as well and it really does make you feel like you have nothing to really fear because you're confronting it head on and you know that you can pick yourself back up no matter what happens. Let me know if you are going to try your setting exercise or if there's anything that you want to take a B plus on right now in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Happy healing. <laughs>